Hello, we return to the pulse rate data that we've used in numerous videos for multiple regression analysis. In this video, I'll be using the data again to create a normal probability plot, another tool to check the regression assumption of normality. We want our residuals to come from a normal distribution, which would indicate to us so do the errors from the population. If we make a dot plot or a histogram, uh, we may not be able to detect as accurately if uh, the data came from a normal curve as this particular tool, which some people prefer. Uh, a, a histogram depends a lot on the intervals that you choose to create it, the, the look of the histogram, so we can remove that arbitrary aspect. Dot plots, uh, sometimes there is not enough data so that we can get a good feeling for if it's mound shaped or not. So uh, many people prefer this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is run a regression and we want to focus on the residuals and see if they come from a normal curve. So I go data, data analysis, regression. Okay, here's my Y, pulse rate. Here's my X's, incline and speed labels in the first row. Let's have the output shown in a new worksheet and I want to see the residuals. Notice down here, this is hard to see, but normal probability plot. Uh, that won't give me what I'm looking for. If you check this, Excel will give you, uh, I'll call it a pseudo normal probability plot and it does it on the response variable, not the residuals. So uh, it doesn't do it correctly and that's why I call it pseudo and we'll have to create our own so let's press OK, and here's the output we get. Let's get rid of all this regression stuff. We're not focusing on that. So I'll just delete all those rows, and let's get rid of these two columns, and then let's format the residuals to two decimal places. And I'll center it, and then I want to insert three columns here. Okay, and then I'm going to make three more columns of information. I want to see the rank of each res residual. I'm going to calculate a proportion of uh, residuals that are smaller than a particular residual or a percentile. Uh, and then I need a z-score, which is my standard normal curve value that leaves that particular proportion to the left of it. Okay, let's rank this column of residuals from smallest to largest. So go data, quick sort, continue with the current selection. There we go ranked from smallest to largest, so now I can just make my rank numbers go up through 30. And now I calculate my proportion. Now I'm going to use a formula. I'll show you this formula. Let's insert object Microsoft Equation Editor. Uh, the I'm going to call this uh, the proportion <laughs> for the ith uh, value and we want the rank value minus a fraction. Now the reason we're subtracting a fraction here is because a normal curve in theory goes to infinity in either directions. And in the denominator I'm going to add a small fraction. Again, this takes a care of the uh, edges of our distribution to coincide with a normal curve. Now this formula is commonly used to calculate um, the area for a percentile. Okay, so I'm going to use that. I say equal parentheses. I grab the rank minus a fraction, all divided by sample size plus a quarter, so that makes 30.25. Okay, so effectively I can say that this first residual, this smallest residual, is at the second percentile. Let's format this to two to three decimal places. I'm going to copy that formula down. Now I want to calculate a z-score, and the function I can use is equal uh, norms inverse, <laughs> norms inv, parentheses, grab the proportion, and parentheses. Let's format this to two decimal places. Okay, so if you looked under a standard normal curve, uh, z equals negative 2.04, you would find it leaves an area 
to the left of it of 0 0.021. Let's copy that formula. Okay, and I'm ready to make my normal probability plot now. I'm going to highlight these two columns. This will be my X and this will be my Y, and I'll make a scatter plot. Insert scatter. There we go. Let's get this out of the way. Let's clean this up. Click on the legend, delete. Click on the grid lines, delete. The residuals go from negative 10 to plus 10. Right click on the Y axis format. Let's go up by fives, cross at negative 10. Under number, get rid of the extra decimal places. Uh, then the uh, Z scores go from negative 2.1 to 2.04. So I'm going to have to start at like negative 2.1. Right click, format axis, go from negative 2.1, oops, negative 2.1 to 2.1 by increments of, uh, see that's 4.2 total, <laughs> I'll go up by increments of 0.6. Axis value crosses at negative 2.1 under number, let's show one decimal place. Okay, let's go up by 0.7 instead. Okay. So we're almost done. Okay, format, plot area, border, solid line. Okay, these are my residuals on this axis. And then on the y, x axis, we could call these theoretical uh, normal curve values or just z scores or normal scores. Get rid of the outside plot area, right click, format chart area, border color, no line. Okay, and I could also edit the points more if I wanted to, but this is fine. Um, now, the what we're looking for here is we want to see these points pretty much fall on a straight line. They won't ever exactly for real world data, but this looks quite linear to me. The more linear this is, the more faith I have that these residuals came from a normal curve. And therefore, the normality assumption would be okay. So since this is mostly linear, then I'm satisfied that normality is okay. Uh, some other graphs might show a, you know, curving like this, or curving like concave up type curve, or concave, or an S curve. Well, those would be violations of normality then.